Let me show you how to build the warp engines of the Starship Enterprise on Monster Hobbies. Let's build it! Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Slescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Well, tonight we are going to be building our warp engines of the USS Enterprise. So let's go down to our bench and take a look at these great parts. And here we are again down on our bench where we're going to be looking at building the warp drive engines, which are one of the major components of the USS Enterprise, because without them they wouldn't be able to get in and out of adventures. So let's open up our box on our bench and take a look at the parts we need to assemble the warp drive engines. Here we are once again back on our bench and now let's open up our box, take out the parts. So we're pretty much coming down to the end of our parts here. We've got the decal sheet left, of course our instructions, and we've got the upper and lower bridge domes which we're saving for painting. So what's left? Well, we have our warp drive engine and the intercooler, which would go there, and this one on the other other side, which is right there, of course. We'll set those here. Then we have our rear end nacelle caps. And our front end nacelle caps. And there's the outer side of our warp drive engine. And the other outer side. Whoa, look at those sink marks. That's incredible. Those aren't sink marks, those are sink caves. Look at that. Whew. What happened on this model? Look, there's a big dent right there, a sink mark again. But have no fear, that's why they created putty. Anyway, this is one of the front intercoolers that would go under here. And there's one that broke off here out of the box. But that's going to go there, and the front of our cap would be there. And then, of course, one of our uh, big sink marked intercoolers, which should go up there. So let's get rid of the bottom of the box and set these up right here. So there we go. Yeah, I never noticed those sink marks until I turned it onto the side here. There's our engines. Now let's take a look at our instructions and see what they show here. The warp drive engines have the most parts of this entire kit. And they are quite nice. As you can see, there's our plans. You can see how many pieces are going there to put them together. The right hand and left hand side per each warp engine, then the front cap and the intercooler and the two other intercoolers, and the rear nacelle cap, and then there's this return loop here. All these pieces have to be put together. So let's go down and get that going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a bit simple for us. I'm going to build one side of the warp engine, and you at home, on your own time, can build the other side. So um, I'll just pick this one since it's right here in my hands. So we're going to remove the parts we don't need. But I think what we'll do is we'll clip out the parts we're going to need, which is one of these. So I'm going to turn my clippers around so it's more like a scoop here. There's one intercooler. This one will go in the box. One of these end caps. Oh, there's a left hand and a right hand one, so we're going to have to figure out which ones they are in a minute. Okay, so this is that one warp engine. So I will need one of these, which we'll clip with our side cutters here. And then this one will go in the box. And then there's one of the fronts. And with the caps, we have to figure out which side goes where. Which 
which we can do in just a sec here. So this is, we're going to just dry fit this together without any glue. Now you'll notice, see this line right here? It's like a piece of plastic that comes up. And then there's another piece of plastic that comes up way up there, another line. On these caps, you'll find a corresponding line. Yeah, right there. And there'll be another one right there. Now, in order to tell which one is which, you just line up the two marks with each other. And that's the cap for this one. Right there. So this one can go in the box. And then, of course, the end cap, there's a little, yeah, double plastic notch thing there. And there's a pin here. So that would, you need to find the one that lines up to it, which would be this one. So this is, whoops, <laughs> that's our cap for our warp engine. See if this one, if you put that notch in, your cap would glue on like that, which of course, when you look at this with my hands out of the way, this is on the inside of the ship this indentation. So your cap is actually facing like twisted outward. So this is the cap for the other side. So now here are our pieces that we're going to need to use. These are universal, so you don't have to worry about a left and a right hand side and all that sort of thing. Oh wow. Okay, so yeah, those are the components you're going to need for your warp engine. Okay, so we're going to start with prepping this warp drive engine here. Now, if you turn this over, you'll notice a series of these alignment pins that are inside. One, two, and the one at the back for three. Now, when they first made this model kit, the alignment was really good. But over time, things shift in the molds and whatnot. There's the the holes for the alignment pins to fit in. Now, what I'm talking about is this. Here is your alignment pins going together. This is why we dry fit these things and test them first. So now, according to this, uh, if you, I don't know how well you can see down there, but it should be down there anyway. Um, all these alignment pins are now fitting inside of one another. But what you'll notice is, if you look at this, you can see the alignment is not right. Especially if you're down here, it's more obvious. You see that that line right there is not meeting up properly. And your holes are not meeting up dead center either. Well, that one's not bad, but... So what we want to do as the first thing to perfecting the fit arrangement between these, is take your side cutters, go right in here, just like that, and snip it off. Okay. And while you're at it, we can do this one too. And on the other side, we're going to clip off these holes. Clip them down. And we're going to clip this off. Being careful with it, of course. So now, when we glue this together, we don't have anything holding us up now. <laughs> and we've got the freedom to move and slide the top to the bottom until they actually do meet perfectly where we need them to meet. That should be right there. And by doing that, we also have it 
perfect right there. So, uh, what we want to do is take our file, or even our hobby knife. Let's do that first. So I've clipped that there. We want to try to get as much of this out of our way as we can. Because if you watched the last video, there we go. If you watched the last video where I was using the secondary hull and gluing that together, you'll remember that I cut a bunch of these styrene strips. So what's going to happen is we want to have the strips instead going down along here so that we've got that nice ridge along there. So when we glue this together, you know, you're going to have this part here sitting on that ridge and it all glued together. So you've got a nice, strong, solid piece of plastic in here along the seam lines in behind. So you can't, you know, grab it once it's together, grab it and do that when your model is glued and painted and everything. Maybe not that extreme, but still, that's a concept. So you want to try to get rid of these out of the way of where that piece of plastic, the styrene sheet from Evergreen Styrene, is going to rest. So this should be good here. And for that one, and then down here, of course, you want to take your knife this way and try not to gouge through the side and the front. <laughs> Or you could use your file here, which is probably a better idea. And just do your cross sanding. There you have it nice and flat in there. You can also perfect it out with your number 16 blade by cross adzing. or adds these uh, mold marks out of here so that this entire area of the support pylon on the inside is nice and flush because we will also be gluing some pieces down here to uh, help with this side swaying action that can result. So we want to stop that from happening. I've seen people use brass in there, but brass is expensive and you can get just as much rigidity with a big solid piece of plastic if you have one. And I've done that in the past. this way, right? And there we go. As you can see right down there now, it's just a channel instead of a thing with bumps on it. So I will do this side and come back in just a sec. So I've cleaned up all the little bumps and lumps in here to make a proper channel for this. And now what we're going to try using is some Evergreen Strip Styrene number 252. This is square tubing, one eighth of an inch. And we're just going to cut our package here and pull one of these guys out. There's three in the package. And there we go. Now this is going to go right down in here. So we're going to need to mark it and cut it. So we'll just take out our little Sharpie here. 
and I'm going to put this piece of styrene right in here and we're going to go down to the bottom so we'll make a mark here and then what I'll do is I will use my saw I'm going to put this away grab the saw and we're going to cut the square tubing square with the saw It off right there. It doesn't have to be too pretty because it's going to be on the inside. So what we do is we glue this down right in that channel and it should look like that. And then this square tubing should provide us some strength on the inside to prevent this from twisting. And it should be high enough so that we can actually close this together and still have square tubing glued from top to bottom. Okay, so I've cut myself two pieces and just so you know, you can actually get away with one package of this square tubing because there's my two cuts and you'll notice there's still a bit of tubing left. Almost one and a half. So, one of those little bags will get you enough for four pieces of support. So now we'll glue this together, and we'll take our straw, pull it out, turn it around. This is our Citadel liquid glue again. A celebrity in its own right. <laughs> okay, so you can pick any side of these warp engines that you want. Oh, wait, I just realized something. Before we glue our square tubing in, let's just put the glue away. And take our sandpaper back out again, because I just realized that we should actually perfect the uh, gluing surfaces. So I'm using my fine sandpaper side, and I'm just sanding down here. Just to make sure we won't have any interference with anything strange that might be coming up on these edges. And I'll do the same on this side. Go across here. And all the way down here. Now we won't do the ends yet because we want to make sure that our alignment is good first. And then we can take off all the flash and everything afterwards. So now, with that out of the way, you can pick a side here. And we'll get our glue back out. And we'll we'll start with one first. So we'll make a bead along here. There it goes. Come right down there. And there's our first little square tubing, gluing right into there, and then we'll do another strip down here, and we'll glue our other square tubing right there, and now that should give us some decent support. If you really wanted to, you could glue another piece of square tubing at an angle and that can give you some extra support you know ang angle wise or you could almost fit two more right in there but that's up to you I think for now I'm just gonna try this one with two along the ridge now in the past I've actually gotten a piece of styrene the same thickness as the square tubes and glued this solid but maybe that's a little overkill okay so that part is done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bead of glue along the top of these. Then I'm going to put a bead of glue on our edges 
and go on down here. And out here. All the way down here. And where else do you think? Oh yeah. <laughs> All the way down here. I'm bumping the tripod. Now hopefully, like in our saucer video, primary hull video, the phone won't start ringing. <laughs> right when I gotta align this. Okay, so here we go. Let's not incur any, any mishaps. So I got this on there. And now we're going to just move this outer bit of our warp engine around and try to get our alignment going. North, south, east, west, top, bottom, left, right, up, down, diagonal, quarterly, any way you can get, get it going. sure we're aligned up here. Everything is looking good. Everything is looking better than factory. I'll bring this together nicely at the top. And at the bottom. Might be off camera a little bit. Okay, there's that. is pretty key in these models so just take your time with it and that should be good for this warp engine now just to keep this all together nice I'm gonna put a couple of our clips down this pylon should give it a, some pressure for the glue to dry squeezing it together there And we should be ready to, to let this sit for overnight, harden up for, ne for the next time we are going to finish this off. So while we are waiting for our warp engine halves to dry from being glued together, we might as well do these extra parts. So what we'll do is, of course, sand down along this edge. To remove that flash, which is like this, and then we can sand down on this edge too. And then we want to get rid of that cutoff point by cross sanding out to the edges. there and then along the top and check to see how the other side is just a little ridge no problem and then of course you want to take your hobby knife and do some adzing 
just to make that smooth there. And a little bit down here. Now this should feel nice and smooth. Just keep going, take your time and perfect it out. And there's that one. Then what else do we have here? We got our intercoolers and we got the end cap for the warp drive. So with the end cap for the warp drive, we have that one cutoff knob right there. Right there. And we can again just carefully use your sandpaper or a file and just knock that off. And you want to be careful because there is detail around here. Like, I don't know if you can see it too well. But there are all these little lines that are going this way. So you want to be careful not to just make this into a smooth area down here. And then of course just... do some adzing around this edge. just to get rid of any little ridges that might be standing up from the molding process. And there you should have a pretty, pretty decent edge here. that one. And then we've got our front caps. So here I'm just gonna do a little cross sanding along the bottom of this so that it'll fit nicely on the front of our warp engine when that's ready to go. And we've got our clip off point there. So we'll just... Okay, now you got to be careful there because there's one of those marks, the little lines. So it's kind of not the most ideal point to put that on. So with the file resting on your thumb here, I'm just going to carefully take that, that point off. There we got some flash. So what we'll do here is we're going to do our adzing around the edge of this. just to get that as a nice good edge. And be careful of those little teeny lines, the teeny tiny alignment lines. It almost feels like I got something there too. Okay, so that's done. And now we got our intercoolers. Now, this one's, well, it's still got a sink mark there, but you'll see these high points there, those mold marks. So I'm going to start there. And, and what I'm going to do is do our cross sanding again in one direction and then in the opposite direction it's 
until this becomes flat. Which looks to be about there. Then we want to do the same over here. until it is gone. And then you've got this big seam line here that's running all the way around. So we want to just do our adzing right there. Scrape it down. Now, you might also want to look here. If this looks too much like it's doing a big staircase thing, again, use your sandpaper and cross sand, try to get the higher down to the level of the lower. It should be there. And again, you can do the cross sanding here. Now it's starting to look more like a one piece instead of a misalignment in the mold at AMT. Now there is a natural ridge along here, so you want to make sure you don't sand that off. But at any rate, and keep in mind the curvature here. There, this is looking really good. And along the front here, making sure you get a 90 degree angle in there. And then of course you want to do some adzing along the bottom, making this bottom piece flat. And do a little adzing right there. And up to the front here. Now these alignment pins are okay, but they've got flash coming off the end. So you just want to... They're not flash, but the connecting points from the parts tree. So you just want to sand this down just a bit. Leaving the point on, but getting rid of the, the big lump. Whoops. <laughs> Almost got a little too enthusiastic, but I left the bump there anyway. Sand up under here. And a bit along here. And there's our intercooler. Now you'll notice a couple of sink marks. We're going to have to fill those with the putty. But you know the technique, you fill that with putty and then you take your, once it's dry, you take your soft sandpaper and you do your cross sanding and you should be able to get that just as flat as with our plastic here. And actually, don't forget to do a little adzing along here, 
just to knock off the little ridge left from the sanding. And again down here. And there you go. Now this, just grab the other engine here, should fit right into these holes. Just nice like that. And that's how they're going to appear on your warp engine. So now the only two pieces we have left are the top intercoolers, but much like the side intercooling return loop, it will have these sink marks on the one side, of course, and that's your filler. But on these sides, it has the raised bit, and it's also got if you can see it, these little teeny bumps that are there. Those are not part of the kit, that's just a mold accident. So you're going to need to just smooth in here with your hobby knife. But it's fairly straightforward again, cross sanding and all the rest. So I'm going to let you guys sand yours down and then we'll come back to this. Now that we have our parts cleaned up, we can put these out of the way and get ready for the next stage. Now, I've cut out these uh, strips of styrene plastic from our evergreen styrene sheet. And what we're going to do is use them as reinforcing strips on the inside of our warp shuttle uh, warp shuttle, our warp engines, and we're going to put some glue on here and slip them down and glue them to the upper surface here so that we've got a, a support against our seam lines. So let's get that ready. And what I'm going to do here is this time around I'm going to use the tester's tube glue because it's got a little more cement in it. And this is fairly straightforward. We're just going to put the cement along here. Try not to get it too thick because you don't want to accidentally melt the plastic on the other side of the plastic. Because you can do this easily if uh, this is given off too much chemical heat. So we'll just put our cap on. And then we'll slip this down the tube. Like so. Until it starts to come out the other end. There it is on the other end. Now what we need to do is just move this so that it's there. And don't worry about the plastic covering over the holes here because we can always take our drill and drill them out. Which we'll have to do anyway because the holes are not perfect due to an alignment problem with AMT's mold. Okay, so you can only get a, your finger down here so far, but do your best to push that up to the top. And then we'll do our other strip for going along the bottom. And again, same technique. Okay, put the cap on our glue. Now this one is going to go down the bottom here. There. And 
there to the seam line. And again, try to get a finger down there. And press up against the top. And now you've got some support there. And we're going to let this dry and then we can cut them off at the tops and the bottom, of course. Way down there. Well, here we are, 24 hours after the glue is dried. And now we can take off the clamps. And put them back in our clamp box. And yeah, that is feeling really solid in there with those square tubings. And now we can cut these off. Turn it around. Cut off on the ends. And now that's given a good solid, solid um, seam line joint, I guess I'm trying to say, along there. And as you can see, I've added putty onto the intercoolers, which should be dry by now. But what we'll do is we will back the camera up a little. And we'll do some cross sanding here and try to get get this feeling perfectly round. So now with cross hatching with round items you want to roll the sandpaper sort of over top of that seam. And then we can come back on the reverse angle, doing the same thing. Because what you don't want to do is create flat spots along here. So again, our cross sanding technique is pretty good at uh, getting things to contour. And much like in the saucer video, you're trying to take the the uh, highest point and send it down to the height of the lowest point. And now there's a spot where we're almost got rid of the seam line. And that step down effect. feeling pretty round. So then we can take out with our fine sandpaper and really get this smooth. Remember you're trying to roll the warp engine as you do this. And there, right in there. It's right to contour. Now remember you want to try to get down here as well and always cross sand and then same with up here with your cutoffs. And go one direction then the other direction and you should have it nice and square for when you put on the front warp cap or the front end of the yeah warp engine so you see we'll come up nice and flush once we glue that on now if you're wondering about in here this is where you can use your your tiny file set you just need to find one that's a flat triangle like this sort of one should do it and then these are all sitting at an angle like that so you want to carefully take your your file and follow that as best you can and if you do this right 
you won't be able to tell there's a line there. There you go. So, why don't you try? And remember, now with these, with their putty, we're just doing that same thing again. A little bit of cross sanding. And now the thing with putty is, it won't always be perfect on the first use of the putty. So we're going to have to put in some more putty in this. Because as you can see here, you've got that little gray circle there. That's a low point. It's just the dust getting caught in the low point of it. So you just use another bit of the green stuff and then sand it again in the same way. And eventually that will flatten out and be as flat and full as this side. Here's our warp drive engine all nicely sanded down without any seam lines anywhere. And as you can tell, it looks pretty good. So there's a couple things I want to show you guys. Now the first is, you have a decision here whether to glue these on right now or leave them off for the painting stage. Because you would have to paint the ball part here, like orange or crimson or whatever you want to do there. Um, do you think it's better, personally, to leave this off, paint the whole thing orange, and then paint this gray, or to glue it on with it, paint the whole thing gray, and then come around and paint this whatever color you want? So I'm going to leave that choice up to you. But as for myself, I'm going to glue the cap on. So now... Remember that there's those marks there. There, you can see them there. They need to line up here. And they need to line up on this other side. There to there. There, are you. there, there to there. And this, this piece will cover over top of those lines. Like that. So that's how these things are going on. Um, yeah, so there you go, to the top. So I'm going to glue my caps on and this piece, the collector. Oh, and remember, those marks have to match. So if you've got the opposite side by mistake, you're going to see, okay, those ones line up. When you turn it around here, well, the line's not there. So you, that'll tell you which one of these is the right side and which is the left side. Okay, and then the other thing to look for is sink marks. There's one there. Uh, there's one under here. There's two, one on each side up here. And those you'll have to fill with putty and sand out and perfect. And here's our warp engine with the parts glued on. Now you can see here that those two little marks are covered over by this piece here, the collector. And not only that, but now you can kind of get an idea of how this engine will fit in the secondary hull because, oops, with this angle here, you'll notice these three kind of things I guess they're supposed to be retaining bolts for the end cap. There'll be one sitting straight up top and then two off to the side. So a triangle like that, like that, and across. And that's the correct alignment. And it should be parallel with that angle in that sort of geometric shape. Now, secondly, remember we glued that strip right across here where the holes didn't line up. So what we want to do is, this is a number 16 drill. A 1 16th drill, I should say, not a number 16. But you want to put it in that hole 
and then drill right through the plastic that we glued in. And it should go any minute. There it goes. And then go over to the front hole. Okay. <laughs> and do the same thing. I think our piece of plastic wasn't glued there perfectly straight, but it's okay. It'll still keep. Then these should be able to fit right in now. And I got one there. Now I'm not sure if this is the right direction. I'm going to have to look it up. So don't quote me on gluing it together like this just yet. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you what the warp engine looks like with all the components in place. That's what it would be like with those parts. And then, of course, you'll have your end cap. That's the wrong one. Right in here. Oops. And there we go. There's your warp engine. Now, the thing is, we're not going to do the end, glue the end cap on yet because that actually requires three colors of paint. Put that to the side. These have to be perfected out. And you don't want to glue them on just yet because you've got all this nice grill detail, which is right in there. <laughs> Can't get too close to the camera. You also have this insert grill detail here. So you want to paint this in a different color and that sort of thing. It'll be really hard to get underneath this one if this was glued in, let's say. Because how are you going to brush around there, you know, perfectly? You're going to hit everywhere. So don't paint this, well, paint this one, but don't glue it in yet. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll do the painting phase a little later on. So now we just got to fill these little sinkholes, and that's easy enough for you guys. Then we can call this video done. Well, we hope you enjoyed that edition of Monster Hobbies Let's Build It, where we built the warp engines for the USS Enterprise. And if you would like to see how we built the stand to hold the model, click down here. If you'd like to see us build the secondary hull, click up here. And if you'd like to see us build the primary hull, then click here. Don't forget to subscribe to us right over here so that I can make some better videos. And please check out our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And we'll see you next time.